Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Leandra the TBR Zero and the goal of this channel is to slowly but surely lessen my physical TBR one book at a time. I am not going to be talking about my TBR very much today though. I have a book tag planned and it's all thanks to Jennifer Loves Books. Recently on her own channel she did the Reading Pet Peeves tag and she very kindly uh, told us who the originator was and that's Big Hard Books and Classics. I've never heard of that booktuber before but thanks to Jennifer I'm gonna have to check them out and I'm really looking forward to talking about these pet peeve topics because some I think I agree with and others I don't but I'm just gonna answer them off the cuff so let's just get into it. The first question is do you use or read along with audiobooks? If you have been watching my channel for any amount of time you'll probably know that audiobooks are very new to me. I started listening to them just this year when I started this channel and they have changed my life. I absolutely adore them. I think that they're a great way to access books wherever you are, whatever kind of reader you are, and I definitely think you can strategize with them, especially when you're pairing with physical books. So I've only done this twice, and the first time I did it was only a few months ago. It was with Emma by Jane Austen, and the second book I've done a pairing with is Dark Whispers by Vashti Hardy. That's the second book in the Bright Storm series. I talk about it in my second September wrap-up video, and I'll put it down in the description for you, but it's just... Uh, I think that when you're pairing audiobooks, ooh, when you're pairing audiobooks with physical books, it can be so advantageous. One, for Emma, it's a very dense book in my opinion, and I don't think I would have been able to read it as quickly, which was still a couple weeks, without the audiobook. The voice narrator was able to help me differentiate between characters. Jane Austen is known for having dialogue that's more like a monologue at times, and the, the pace of the audiobook kept me going during slower action scenes. So I think that it's a great way for you to get through classics that you're just dying to read, but you know you're not really a classics lover. With Dark Whispers though, I enjoyed it so much because the narrator added so much life to the characters. I felt like there was an, an extra texture or layer to the actual narrative. So it was just a really good time. And I think I'll do that eventually when I get to Fire Song, which is the third book in the series. I also just think audiobooks are amazing because we have so many opportunities to access it without having to pay for it. I personally only get my audiobooks through Libby and Hoopla, and they are library affiliated apps. So I get to support my local library while I also get free access to these audiobooks. So yeah, a win-win situation. The second book, no it's not, the second question is do you utilize your local library? I 100% utilize my local library. Among my various part-time jobs, one of them is working at a library as a library assistant, so it shouldn't surprise anyone that I would want to support my local library. Also in question one, I just talked about library apps, so this is a really easy question to answer. I also recently featured a bunch of library books in my latest video, which was talking about spooky books for October for my, my TBR this month. And I want to say at a time, I have between five and 10 books, physical books that I am borrowing from my library. I just showed you three. I have a whole pile elsewhere outside of this screen. I also am currently borrowing probably five to six audiobooks through those apps that I talked about. So yeah, 100% supporting the library. Imagine if I had physically bought all of those books, how much money would I have spent? And personally with my own budget, I just wouldn't be able to do it. So libraries are amazing. Thank you for existing. Question number three, do you DNF books? Yes, I do DNF books. I used to be really bad about not DNFing a book. I would struggle and struggle and struggle, struggle, obviously, through these books that are either just not the right time for me to be reading them, I'm not in the right headspace, I'm currently in a different type of mood, maybe the book just genuinely isn't for me, but for some reason I would rather suffer through it. And unfortunately for the author, I'm reading a book that maybe I'm not the audience they wanted to have like be reading it anyway so it doesn't really make sense. So I've gotten a lot better about DNFing books and not feeling badly about it. 
recently actually in like the last couple weeks or past month I've had to DNF a few books I DNF'd um well, let me just grab them one moment so I grabbed the four books most recently that I DNF'd uh, one of them is The 1230 from Croydon, and this is by Freeman Wells Crofts. It's a golden age detective fiction novel. And I am, I will say I'm a little disappointed that I didn't continue with this book. You can see I only got to like the first chapter. And that's because this was the book for the She Done It book club, I believe in August, if I'm remembering correctly. And I just, I just didn't have time. Classes were starting up. And then once the book club ended, I just didn't find the motivation to actually get back into this book, but I 100% intend to read it when I just know that I'm ready to do so. I also DNF'd uh, Life on the Rocks. This is by Julie Burwald. Again, this is not the author's fault. I enjoyed it so much to the point where I was reading it too. It's just, it's really hard for me to read nonfiction books uh, when I don't have enough time to really be sitting down with them. If I'm reading a chapter here, a chapter there, it's just it's really difficult for me and again my life got busy but I love nonfiction books about the environment so I 100% intend to read this as well. This one was a bit disappointing for me I will say. I also DNF'd The Hand on the Wall this summer. I, I actually got a little bit further in this book compared to the other two and maybe again I just I wasn't ready for it. I think the problem was is that I found the first two books so satisfying in the Truly Devious series that I almost just didn't feel like I needed to read book three, which doesn't make sense because it's a trilogy, like the mystery isn't fully done, but I don't know, for some reason I felt like it was done enough for me. So I actually don't know if I'll ever pick this up again. Um, we'll see though, we'll see. And finally, <laughs> I DNF'd uh, Death by Cashmere. This is by Sally Goldenbaum. I believe it's the first book in her Seaside Knitters mystery series and this was also with a book club. So again got about maybe 50 pages in and I did find it enjoyable. There wasn't any thing that I could pinpoint for why I didn't like it. It's just that the book club Again, the month was coming to an end and I suddenly just didn't feel motivated to actually push myself to finish it versus uh, it maybe if I started at the beginning of the month. So some of these are my own fault for not being in the right headspace, maybe not starting it early enough in the month to feel motivated to finish it, to have that discussion with the other book members, book club members. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm for DNFing. That's okay. Question number four, do you read multiple books at the same time? I didn't used to, but I do actually very frequently now. And one of that is because I'm a graduate student, so I have some assigned novels I'm meant to read. And I didn't want to get back into that habit of when I was an undergrad where during that semester, all I would do was academic work. So if I was reading something, it was always for a class. It was never for fun. But when I got into a master's program, I decided let's not get back into that bad habit. So yeah, during the semester, I'm definitely reading multiple books at a time. Usually I'll read uh, my like, academic work during the day and then maybe say at like seven o'clock, eight o'clock, decide that I'm, I'm done working for the day. And then suddenly I'll be reading for pleasure the rest of the evening. I also am totally fine with multiple books if they're of different genres, right? So if I have a nonfiction book, I can pick up a fiction book. If I'm reading a mystery, I don't feel strange about also reading a romance at the same time or a historical fiction. I My brain is able to keep those separate. Now, if I was reading multiple mysteries at a time, that would probably be too difficult unless I'm listening. There's also there's also listening as well. So yeah, I, I think I am okay as long as something's different, whether it be the format, the genre, the tone, anything like that. Question number five, do you make time or have a specific time in your day devoted to reading? I already kind of answered this. I definitely read every evening before bed. I think that's a really healthy habit and I think it's better for us to be away from screens. So if I am reading before bed, which is every night, I will be reading a physical book. It won't be an e-reader book or uh, an audio book or anything like that. And I like to start my mornings off reading if I can. When I'm driving to work, I also definitely will be putting on an audio book. That is such, again, such a good reason to get into audiobooks is just making your commute 
a little bit more fun and dynamic with a story in your head. So fun. Question number six, do you dog ear books? No. Question number seven, do you annotate your books? I used to. It's quite interesting and there's no rhyme or reason for why I've slowly not been annotating books anymore. Back in the day, I used to even like write my name in the book and, you know, put something like number six for the year, like that kind of crazy stuff. Or I would highlight my favorite, uh, like my favorite quotation marks. I would underline. I, I used to be a really big annotator, whereas now I, I think I'm gravitating away from it because A, I'm, I'm reading more library books, which of course you should not be annotating those. I also really like re-gifting books that I've read that I've just loved or that I want someone else to read or I enjoyed it, but I think someone else is the better audience for it. I just, I think that books should be read multiple times. So if I know I'm not going to read it again, I will give it to someone else. And I don't know, I used to enjoy the idea of having someone else read a book that I gave them and see the lines I loved because I just love that kind of idea of a connection. But I don't know, I just, I no longer do that. And I, I can't explain why. Is anyone else like that? Were they an annotator and now they're not or vice versa? Did they not used to do that and suddenly they become an avid annotator? That would be interesting to know. And finally, how do you feel about spoilers? I don't think I'm, I'm not as serious about spoilers as other people. For instance, I used to be a huge fan, which I'm, it's not that I'm not a fan now. I just don't really watch television or movies very much anymore. But I used to actually prefer seeing the movie first before reading the book. I know some people are going to cringe or scream or freak out, but I genuinely enjoyed the idea of seeing the actors, seeing the setting, and just knowing what it's all going to look like. So then when I'm reading, I can picture it immediately. And of course, the book's going to be way more detailed and have more scenes. But I have that background knowledge where I can picture those actors doing the scenes that they didn't do in the movie. And I just really like that. So I think that it would be a bit hypocritical to say that I don't like spoilers when I'm fine with seeing the movie first. And also, depending on the genre, spoilers are just guaranteed. Like if it's a contemporary romance, are you what do you think is going to happen? That they're going to kill each other or end up hating each other? And of course, they're going to end up in like a happily ever after situation. So it just doesn't make sense. I think with mysteries and thrillers, it's a bit more complicated. Because if the solution is spoiled for you, then it might not be as fun to try to figure it out. Part of the fun is you guessing who did it or who the, you know, the thriller, you know, bad guy is. But like, I mean, even with horror, again, you know people are going to die. Maybe you just don't want to know who it is. And there are mysteries that are how done it. So you immediately know who it is. You just don't know how they did it. And we get a lot of TV shows like that too. Like um, back in the day, Monk used to be a huge, uh, like they, the really common pattern that they used to do was show us who the person was. And then the entire episode is just about how Monk is going to prove that this person did it. So like, it just depends on, on if we are meant to know what's going to happen or not. And if, especially once you're like an avid reader of a certain genre, they all have tropes. They all have uh, classic designs, whether it be setting, structure, conflict. So like, I don't know. I don't think I can be too picky about a spoiler. Um, yeah, whatever. Okay, well, that is the reading pet peeves tag. I'm not going to name anyone because at this point, I just don't know who's done it and who hasn't. I am more than likely uh, than not someone who's late to the train. So if you're seeing this and you have some really heated ideas or thoughts to, to answer these questions with, go right ahead. Please do it. Consider yourself tagged. I would love for you to tag me in it just so that I can go and see your own answers because I think that's really fun and it, it turns it into a bit of a back and forth dialogue. But again, thank you Jennifer Loves Books for introducing this tag to me. I really enjoyed a lot of her answers and her thoughts and she pairs it with another tag. She does like a, a two in one video. So I do recommend you go check her out. And yeah, so if you have any thoughts, 
reactions. Did you love the video? If you did, give it a like, consider subscribing, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody, bye!